let's let's get let's kind of geek out on guitar. I I I'm a total hack. You're awesome. Uh, but I love to talk guitars and gear. Yep. Um, I do too. I'm a gearhead. Awesome. Well, I'm a tweaker. So tell me about a little bit about this deal you got going with Line Six right now. Well, you know what, Line Six. We've always been Mesa Boogie guys, and still are. I have Mesa Boogie equipment, and I'll always use Mesa Boogie equipment because I love their gear. Line Six, on the other hand, they came out with some heads called DT50s, and they're Bogner designed. 50 watt, believe it or not, tube heads, and they sound really great for what they are. And it's a combination of the digital modeling and uh, programmability with the analog tube circuitry right. that is on the back end. So you kind of get a combination of both. Uh, we're using the HD 500 pods, which is what I was, what I liked about it. Oz has been using a pod for a long time, but mm -hmm. <clears throat> didn't sell me on it because. I wasn't able to run the front end of the distortion with the parametric EQ, which yeah. is what I've always done. Right. PQ3, that's the Striper sound. Mm -hmm. And I stumbled upon that before Striper. Yeah. I was experimenting. I bought a Lab Series L5 and L11 head, and I used to preamp Marshalls with those. Mm -hmm. And they had a little parametric on them. And I'd set that parametric to 1K, and there was the Striper tone. Gonk, gonk, you know, yeah. that chunky. Well, and that's what I was going to ask you was kind of that where 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 do you get that that tone you know that it that, came it came it way before it came when we were in rock's regime and I, I, it was a lab series i bought experimenting came up on it everyone that heard it i would play with the guys in rat they would mm -hmm. come up to me and i'd hide the lab series they'd come up to me and say what in the world are you using i'd say hey man you know i was real hush hush yeah, about right and then it went from the lab series to a Furman PQ3 I purchased, and that was that was the Striper tone. We used that on every record, driving a Mesa Boogie. That was yeah. it. I went down to a shop in LA uh, prior to the uh, first album, purchased a Mesa Boogie head, ran that into a Mesa Boogie bass amp, ran that into Mesa Boogie cabs, and it was just this wall of sound. Yeah. Uh, Mark II C plus. But um, man, I tell you, I. Right now, the labs, the uh, not the lab series, the line six. Thank you. I'm able to dial in a very similar tone. You know, it's different. Yeah. Because it's digital. Right. It's modeling, so it models what I used to use analog. Right. So right. it's it's different, but it, I'm able to dial it in, and they've been really good to us, man. They've given us loads of gear, and really taking care of us. You know, uh, I'm also using carving guitars, which they're. The best guitars I've ever played for Striper. Mm -hmm. They're the specs are of a, a PRS Custom 24 neck. Uh, they made the original paint job of my original Randy Rhodes. They're really killer guitars. That's awesome, dude. And and do could we for people that maybe are using Line Six Guitar Lab, something like that, or Tone uh, the Tone Lab uh, online? Are they talking about? releasing uh, maybe a striper model or a, or a michael sweet model you know not at the moment that i'm aware of but who knows maybe that would happen uh, it'd be cool to design like a striper head you know or stri something that that gives you that striper tone in a box you know that'd be yeah. really cool yeah i'm i'm digging that that'd be great uh, you know i'm a line six player myself yeah. but you know uh i've got a uh, a spider three you know it's a two by twelve uh, combo Yep. Plenty loud to uh, shake the walls in the house and make make my, my two-year-old go, yeah. what's that? Right. And it's like, right. but uh, yeah, so you click through, you know, kind of get through all your presets and that's, and, and it's interesting because you're that striper tone. I can sit there and mess with it all day, and I, yeah, it's not quite right, and that's why. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's, it's, the, it's the parametric EQ driving the front end of either the distortion pedal you're using or the, the head you're using that's distorting. Yeah. That's the key to the striper tone. It's, it, it, it smooths out the distortion. It's almost like a, it's like Boston, it's got a little bit of a rock man, yeah. but on steroids. Right. You know, right. and you know who was really influenced by our tone too, and went out and purchased uh, Furman was Dimebag. Ah, uh, yeah. People know that, but he went out and purchased Furmans as well. And in, 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 if you listen to the original 
dime bag tone, it's, there's a lot of similarities there in the striper tone. Right, right. And He's I doing the same thing. And I, I was uh, really uh, lucky uh, as as a as a kid, as a teen, I got to see uh, uh, Pantera actually yeah. played my high school. Yeah. They're from we're from the same area, and and so before Pantera was Pantera, yeah. you know, I kind of got to see. So I, I'm I'm familiar with that tone. Yeah. That's awesome, dude. Yeah, man. That's awesome. Well, you know. Change tack a little bit. Um, you know, we, we've kind of covered a lot of different areas, um, but it seems no matter what, um, God's really kind of blessing you, blessing Striper right now, um, putting a lot of opportunity out there, a lot of, um, I don't know, just, just good things. Um, but I wanted to make it personal, and I was really kind of curious in what way are are you seeing God be real in your life kind of daily? I mean, what makes you kind of go, yeah, thanks, God? Well, it's, it's been tough, man. I mean, this is a tough tour because we're, we're doing a lot of shows in a small amount of time. It, it, it was basically booked last minute. We're doing a lot of interviews, so it's really tough having trouble with sound checks, monitors, and so it's real easy to fall into that trap of complaining and being, you know, just kind of frustrated with everything. But I just think the blessing is the fact that we're still here able to do this. There's a lot of bands that aren't or who are playing to 100 people a night. Right. We're able to go out and play to five, six, seven hundred 700 people a night. Right. And it's really, it's really pretty amazing yeah. for a Christian band from the 80s to still be able to go out and, and bring people in. Right. It's really something to be thankful for, you know, and, and to count our blessings. Uh, and we do. Uh, but again, it's easy to start complaining as well. We try not to go there, but it's difficult. Yeah. Well, um, I tell you what, it would not be a, a clutch interview without putting you through clutch's quick fire. Okay. Are you ready? Sure. All right. This is five rapid fire questions followed by five rapid fire answers provided by you, Michael Sweet All of right. Striper, so that we, the members of the metalocracy, can get into your brain, dig around a little bit, figure out. What makes you tick? Are you ready? Yep. Okay, number one. What's your favorite junk food? M&M's, peanut. Me too. See, I knew I liked this guy. All right. Uh, the album you cannot stop listening to. Oh, boy. I, that's a tough one because I don't listen to music I haven't in a long time. But there was a time when I couldn't stop listening to the Keen album. I don't know why. Listen to that record over and over and over again for a good six, seven months probably. All right. Okay. Keen. Keen. All right. What is what was your first car? First car was a Cougar XR7 convertible. Nice. Multicolored. Oh, even better. Okay. Number four. If you could have any superpower, what would it be? To sing. Uh, to sing perfectly and flawlessly every night. And You've got that one. Oh, control. come on, Mike. Please, please. Superpower. Uh, I don't know, man. Maybe to, maybe to fly. Oh, flying's a good one. All right. Super Mike flies. Number five. What is your favorite drink at Starbucks? Uh, Venti Caramel Macchiato <clears throat> on a cold day. On a hot day. A venti caramel macchiato iced with soy. Take note. Take note, people. All right. All right. Well, congratulations. You survived Clutch's quick fire. Now, I, 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 I end every interview the same way, and, and I believe it's the most important way to end it because it's the, the one thing that truly um, – it's the basis of my show, and that is to give hard rockers a soft place to land, and um, and that extends not just the listeners, but every band that makes music, that makes the music we love. You guys pour a lot into us um, as fans, and if the one thing I can do to pour back into you is pray for you, then that's what I want to do. Um, what can I pray for you about? Well, just for uh, strength and uh, health, you know, to, it, it gets, I got sick in rehearsals out here and because somebody was sick and I caught it and then it kind of spreads around. So that's real tricky to kind of balance out having to perform and tour and not get sick. 
and sing and whatnot. So it's really tough. But just pray for health and uh, endurance, stamina, for us to continue doing what we're doing. And uh, if we're healthy, you know, we can keep going. Yeah. If we're not, we can't. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I want you to know that uh, I'm going to honor that as your brother. And uh, I'm, uh, anytime you need anything, uh, if you want prayer support, if you need anything, we're here. The Metalocracy's here. And uh, we're going to continue to, to support you guys. Thank you so much, Michael. I appreciate it. And uh, we'll uh, talk again soon. Everybody, check it out. Rock and roll. Michael Sweet from Striper.